Matt Hayton here for Sound on Sounds and continuing our Revoice Pro workshops. Um, here I've, uh, I've got the same audio parts I had before from the APT video. Um, there's a lead vocal, there's the original backing vocals, and there are some time aligned outputs. And you can see you start to get quite a few different tracks in your project. Um, and what I want to talk about here is ways of auditioning the different parts quite easily. There are a few built-in ways to do it. Um, personally, I like to use the Manage Track Groups function, which I'll come on to later, but let me quickly run through some of the most useful shortcuts. Now, if you just use the standard number keys on the keyboard, that will toggle the um, each track on and off the uh, solo. So one gives me the first track, two the second, three the third, four the fourth, and so on. I can run my finger along there and, uh, and do several at once. Um, I, that's a really useful way of, of working when you've got everything you need to see on screen. But when your project starts to get a little bit bigger, it's uh, a bit trickier. Now, another option is to select one of the tracks, uh, one of the output tracks, and then you can use the five keys running from A to G on your QWERTY keyboard. Um, G would select the guide for the current uh, currently selected output. D would select the dub that's associated with it. A, it stands for align, so that selects the uh, the output that you've aligned. And in between those, the F and the S keys select the uh, the two either side of it. So F gives you the guide and the dub, because it's between the G and the D keys. And S gives you the dub and the output, so that you can compare the before and after. Um, that's useful, but when you started to do multiple processes, you can see it's only looking at one process at once, so you can't find your way around there, and there's no standard button to deselect everything and, and have, a, have nothing soloed or muted. And that's the reason I like to use the track groups. So let's have a look at that now. So you go to Tracks, Manage Track Groups, and you can create as many different groups as you want. Um, I'm going to create uh, one for my guide. I'm going to create one for my dubs. I'm going to create one for my outputs. And then I'll probably create one for uh, guides and outs. Create another one so I can audition the guide and dubs. So I can hear them all together. I'll use an ampersand just to <laughs> keep consistent. Um, I like to have one called all as well, so that um, that just enables me to toggle things on and off quite easily. Um, that should be enough for the moment. And getting the tracks in there is as simple as um, you just select it on this side, make sure you have the correct group selected and add. So here's my dubs. Select all those, put them in there. Outputs in the same way. Um, usefully, you can assign um, tracks to more than one group, which enables me to set up these multiple selections. And then all is obviously every single track. Okay. Now there's a pane over here on the right. You can see um, there's various different buttons here. Um, v just means that the group is visible. So that's useful when you've got a big complex project. I could hide, say, the, uh, the dubs. And then I'm just looking at the guide and the outputs, which is the result I want. I can solo just the guide and the outputs by doing this so that that's all I can hear. Um, I could alternatively mute the dubs. Um, you, you can go through any of those groups doing that. Um, you probably want to make sure everything is visible um, as a default position, but it's useful when you're trying to navigate. And if you're trying to do drag and drop or copy and paste of your results back into your door, I find it's really useful just to be able to hide everything except your outputs, and then you can just work through track by track. Um, it, it just keeps everything neat and in one place, and it, it, it just means you, it, it's much less likely that human error creeps in. Um, the A button is the other one you need to know about, and if I click on that for um, 
I need to make sure it's visible. <laughs> if you click on that one for the guide, you can see that there's over on the left here, there's a colored bar that appears. And that just says that that group is, is active. Um, so you can see they're all different colors and it makes it easy to see which ones are associated with which group. Now, obviously I've got some more groups here and as I click more, you can see that it starts to split it between the, um, the two different groups and you end up with quite a lot of, uh, a lot of color, which starts to get a little bit confusing, but that's just the way I set the groups up. Overall though, you should be able to see that that's a really useful way of um, auditioning your changes. You don't have to go through and mute each dub and uh, each output to compare before and after results. Um, I can get a little bit more complex than that, and I have done in the past, um, but I recommend starting with a template which gives you guides and dubs and outputs, and um, you might want to put something else in dedicated to mono and stereo doublers and that kind of thing. And then if you keep your naming consistent, so rather than name it after the specific audio part, you name it as guide, dubs, outputs, doublers, that kind of thing. It just get, helps you to keep things familiar. It's an application that you're not using all the time um, in the same way that you would your door. So I find that it's a lot more effective for me to be able to open Revoice Pro and instantly know my way around it, know which track is which, and then just bring the parts in from Cubase or Pro Tools, what have you, that I want to process, um, and then stick them back. I don't need to call it a vocals, drums, or whatever, because I'm generally only working on one kind of source at a time. Um, there we go. I hope that helps you find your way around.